by Sebastian Haust, Benedict and Lara Benedict. Sorry in advance in case I do something clumsy with my microphone, but I'm Italian, so I use my hands for talking. This is really difficult. Uh, so in this talk, I'm going to give some improvement about uh, inner product masking skins. Uh, so first of all, let's do some, some context. So, okay, we're in the in track of such an attacks. So the task of attacks that happens when we implement in the hardware some cryptographic algorithm. Indeed, we can have some leakage about sound, temperature, timing, and the most useful is actually uh, power consumption. And all these leakages can give some sensitive information about the, um, the, um, the values. So the um, security model that formalized the, uh, uh, the Sajamid attacks is the T-Robin model, uh, the one that we are going to consider. Uh, where in the T-Robin model, the adversary can access up to three values in the circuit. So usually a circuit looks like something like this. So in these blocks, you can see uh, we have some operations. For example, we have some linear operations or some non-linear operations like the multiplication. And um, so in order to guarantee um, privacy in the t bing model, we have to guarantee the existence of a simulator, which can simulate the adversary's view without actually knowing the secret. And a stronger probability is the t stronger interference, TSNI, which I don't give the details about it, but you just have to remember that it's a property which guarantees that your composability uh, between gadgets. So guarantees that uh, if a gadget, uh, if the output of a gadget is actually input of another gadget, this can be always secure, secure composed if both gadgets are TSNI. So an important countermeasure against the channel attacks is the uh, masking. So what does it mean masking? Uh, so this means to split every sensitive variable in the circuit into n random shares, such that if the attacker knows up to t of these random shares, then he cannot recover entirely the circuit. So, uh, the circuit, sorry. So a circuit will look like this. We will have an encoder, which will, uh, I'm sure, <laughs> which will split the circuit S in, uh, in some shares, S1, Sn. And then we will have the circuit, when we will have the uh, operation we saw before. And uh, the nonlinear operations, especially with some randomness, uh, in order to guarantee the, uh, to hide the secret. <coughs> and then at the end, we will have a decoder, which will recompose the, uh, the output. So the current um, studies are about, about um, yeah, masking scheme are trying to find a good trade-off between high performance and less evidence of leakage. And there are different masking schemes that have been proposed so far. And uh, one of the most common is the William masking that is vastly used and really efficient. And but we are going to study the inner product masking in this talk uh, because it actually shows less evidence of leakage, but so far it was really inefficient, so not really used in practice. So in particular, I will give you a new multiplication scheme which the design that, um, that show um, so less um, execution, uh, execution, execution time and without randomness complexity. Uh, randomness uh, requirements, and then we will see um, an application the S box with the AES, some new implementation results, and um, a more detailed information theoretic evaluation of the inner product uh, encoding. <coughs> so first of all, I um, give you some more detailed um, context. So what is a Boolean masking? So if we have a secret S, so a Boolean masking in the Boolean masking the encoding will consist in taking some n minus 1 random values, s1, sn, and to ascend to s1, uh, s2, sn, sorry, to s1, the sum of the secret, plus the sum of all the other shares. So it's kind of intuitive to see that in order to uh, decode the secret now, we just have to add all the shares. And uh, a really famous multiplication scheme is the SW that was introduced in crypto 2003 uh, by Ishai and Wagner. So a multiplication scheme now uh, needs to operate um, on some vector. 
So because now the inputs would be, uh, would be A and B, for example, that are shared in A1 A N, B, would be 1 B N. And the output C needs to guarantee that the product between the sum of the shares AI and the sum of the shares AB give the sum of the shares uh, of C. So now, how it works, they establish, so we have a matrix T that is composed by the inner products between A and B, so AI and J. And on the other end, we have a um, mat uh, um, matrix of uh, random values. So in particular, <coughs> of the, all these random values has to be an encoding of zero. So this means that every random value has to appear two times, and one of the two times should be the opposite of the other one. Um, yeah, we will see why, why this is useful. And then we sum these two matrices, and we obtain a matrix D. And the sum of the components on each of each row or uh, each column will give the uh, components of the output C. So now we can see why we need this particular random bits. Because in order to guarantee correctness, we need that the uh, sum of these, uh, of these output shares will give exactly this sum. And in this way now, we can, uh, we can uh, cancel out of this randomness and we have correctness. So the inner product masking is slightly more complicated. Indeed, we have um, a set of phase at the beginning of execution of the circuit, which, is, um, which will fix a, a, a vector L. And this vector will be fixed for all the execution of the algorithm. So this vector is uh, represented by um, L2 LN random values, non-zeros. And we assign to the first value L1, we assign 1. And in order to encode the secret S, now we take S2, Sn random values, and we assign to S1 the secret S plus the sum of the uh, products of the shares uh, Li, Si. So <coughs> now decoding means calculating the inner product between the vector L and the vector of, of the shares S. And again, it's easy to see that this is the, the secret S. So I will now show you um, our uh, new multiplication scheme, and I will explain why it actually, it's actually an improvement um, compared with, uh, with previous works. So again, the multiplication will take an input A and B. Uh, so, we are, so we actually take a lot of inspiration by the SW that I showed you before. Indeed, we, we have again a matrix T of uh, inner products and a matrix U this time of random values. And uh, so, but this time we have to take into account the presence of these uh, shares Li in order to guarantee correctness. So the matrix of the um, inner product will contain AI, BJ, and LJ. And as for the random values, again, we have some random values appearing two times, uh, considering an, uh, an encoding of zero. And all these random values has to be multiplied by LI, the inverse of LI. I will show you later why this actually guarantee correctness. And then for, uh, for the rest, it's, re it's really, oh, okay, sorry, for the rest, it's really similar to, uh, to the SW of before, so we sum T and U. And, uh, and again, the sum of the components of B represents the components of C. So correctness. So I'm not going to read all, the, all this formula, don't worry. But uh, what we have to see is now, in order to uh, show correctness, we have to show that the inner product between L and C is equal to the product between the inner product between L and A and the one between L and B. So by just simply substituting um, the, uh, the components here, at some point we see why we need this Li um, to the, um, the inverse of Li. Because now, thanks to this, here we cancel out some, some values. And here we obtain the sum of the UIJs. And since we, we, we took all of them one the opposite of the other one, this is just 0. And here we just have the product of the inner products. So we have uh, correctness. It's just uh, algebraic uh, calculations. And we show this scheme to be TSNI, so to have good composability properties. And needs only T plus 1 shares. That is really the optimal uh, amount of shares needed. 
And all skills, so far, only achieved T probing security, so didn't give any guarantee about composability, and we need two T plus one shares. So we can see that here we, we have a uh, real improvement. So let's see now, uh, so how to apply these schemes to the S box of the NES. So we have to consider the exponentiation to the power 254, and we take this argument from the Hibernian proof. So we see from, from this chain that we need some multiplication, that are these gray, uh, green blocks, and then we need some squaring, that are linear operations, and some refreshing. So now for completeness, I can show you the uh, refreshing and the, um, and the squaring, but actually these algorithms already exist in other previous works. But actually we're consolidating also the security of this algorithm and give more um, <coughs> precise uh, proofs of security. So uh, the squaring, so uh, yeah, it's pretty, pretty easy because it's just a component-wise operation, it doesn't need any randomness since it's linear. So we just need to square all the uh, components of the secret, of the input, sorry, and multiply them with uh, L1, Ln. That's it. So the refreshing is a bit more complicated. So what does it mean refreshing? So we have an input text, and we have to give an output, which has the same decoding. So Ly is equal to Lx. But internally, we will add some randomness. And this will make the, um, the masking um, independent of each other. Indeed, the refreshing is usually used in order to guarantee independence of, uh, of, what, of values. So we have a first step in which n times we assign a vector L, a, a R, uh, which is um, a different encoding of zero every time. So encoding of zero, this means to take, again, R2 or n random values and to assign to R1 the sum of R i L i. And then in the second step, <coughs> we have to add recursively this R j to x. So first step, we we'll just assign x, the, the vector of the input, and then we have x plus R1, then x plus R2, and so on and so forth. And at the end, the output will be x plus R1 plus uh, R2 plus Rn. So this means that every component uh, uh, xi now has been added to n different random bits. And this is actually the power of this, of this scheme, it's why actually it's really secure, it's secure. and so, so TSNI again with T plus 1 shares. So now let's look a bit more in detail about the, um, the, chain, the chain. So here is where actually it's used uh, the refreshing. And yeah, so as I said before, the refreshing is needed in order to guarantee uh, independence. Indeed, before actually um, these values are injected in R, they are dependent. This, um, these red lines that you see here. But the multiplication of our P multiplication needs to be needs to receive uh, independent inputs. So it means that the inputs before pass through a refreshing in order to be independent at, at this point. But so you saw before that this refreshing needs a lot of randomness, so it's really expensive. <coughs> And in order to um, optimize the amount of randomness needed, we uh, design a new multiplication scheme for dependent inputs, and we call it IP mode 2. So this means that this, um, this multiplication scheme can take uh, two dependent inputs, so A and G A, where G is a linear function. And of course, we want this, this scheme to use less randomness than, uh, than in this case. So, the, um, so the trick in order to guarantee this is to internally refresh in the, uh, one of the two inputs. So first of all, we refresh internally this a, this a, so we add a i to some random values e j, and we obtain a matrix a prime. So as before, we have to calculate now a matrix t of inner products. But this time, one of the two uh, members that we go to multiply is not AI, so it's not the, one of the inputs anymore, but it's this refreshed component of A prime. <coughs> and then we do exactly as before. We have a matrix of random components, defined exactly as before. And then we add uh, a vector B, which actually just guarantees correctness. This doesn't, is not needed in order to guarantee security. Because here, when we did this calculation, 
we add some, some new members that will not guarantee goldenness at the end if they're not um, cancelled out afterwards. And then again, we have a matrix B that is the sum of all these vectors and all these matrices. And the sum of the components uh, on the, on the columns is the components of the uh, output shares. Okay, so now we can substitute the first multiplication scheme with the new multiplication scheme, and we can eliminate here the refreshing that was before. And we show this, this scheme again to be secure and uh, composable using T plus one shares of the input, and in general, all, the, uh, all this box to be TSNI with T plus one shares of the input. This is really important because, of course, in the AS, and this is composable with other rounds. So, uh, some comparison. So, this is the new case where we use our optimized multiplication. And this, this is what we had before. So, uh, multiplication scheme and the refreshing. And here we have a table of comparison between the number of addition, multiplications, and random bits. So, this is the amount of uh, the normal multiplication that we see here in white. In green, you see the, uh, this case. And here in orange, you see um, the case with multiplication and refreshing. And we have pretty the same with additional multiplications, more or less. But with random bits, we, uh, we um, save a factor of n in the, in the randomness. Because indeed, before, the refreshing needs uh, uh, t square, uh, n square random bits. And this time, in order to refresh internally this a, we just need n random bits. So let's go now for a look at the performance evaluations. Um, so here you can see an implementation of the S-box uh, compared with Boolean masking. So in orange and in red, you see uh, the Boolean masking with two different addition chains. And with uh, um, gr uh, green and blue, you see the implementation with our uh, IP masking with the two different uh, multiplications as I showed before. So it's not really surpri su su surprising to see that actually our scheme is um, slower. And the reason uh, is in the presence of this L that actually gives a lot of more computation as before. On the other end, it's also true that the most um, practical cases are the ones with low, uh, or low uh, n, uh, small n. So we need actually an optimization for small n so what we did, we tabulated the field multiplication with a lie, and yeah, this is possible only with small n, that's why it's small n, otherwise it would be practical. And here you see a comparison of timing and memory. So here in green, we, we have the I, our IP masking, again with just the multiplication, or using also the, the first multiplication, so using the second one. And here we have the Boolean masking. And so you can see that now we still, of course, have an overhead, uh, but it's smaller than before. So, fair enough. Um, so we gave also a deeper um, information theoretic evaluation of the IP encoding. Uh, we consider the case of n equal to two, and we consider the encoding of a value a in uh, as a one plus l two uh, times a two. Uh, so here you see uh, the the case of linear leakage. So where the leakage is represented by the humming weight of the uh, shares plus noise, that is um, usually a random value uh, variables. And here you see um, how the Moodle information between the leakage and the value uh, behave according to the noise variance. So in, uh, in this uh, black line, you see the A, so the, 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 the value A that is not, uh, is not masked. And then in blue, you see the one with Boolean masking and then with red, we see the more <coughs> IP masking. And on purpose, we actually try this IP masking with different values of n, because we saw before, we, every time we have to, so in the new execution of a new algorithm, of a new circuit, sorry, uh, we have different n. And interestingly, uh, we saw how by, so by turning this n, we have different um, kind of leakages. Uh, <coughs> but more, more interesting, we can see that it's actually our scheme uh, leaks less than, uh, um, than Boolean masking. So um, we study also a bit more the transition-based leakages. So what does it mean to transition-based leakages? So um, this happens when an adversary 
receives not only the, uh, the noisy version of the shares, but also the distance. And when does it happen? <coughs> this happens when some <coughs> registers are used consecutively in order to store two different shares of the same uh, value. So, for Boolean masking, given encoding A of A1 plus A2, so observe that the humming weight of the, uh, of the sum will get just the humming weight of A, and this will vanish actually the effect of the, of the masking. On the other hand, our IP masking, so in our IP masking, the presence of this L will make still the distance of the humming weight uh, uniformly distributed. So we don't see any evidence of um, leakages in transition-based leakages. And for concluding, I will show you some empirical such a leakage evaluation that actually gives confirmation of what we just saw in practice. So, um, uh, so here you can see the comparison uh, to the uh, T-score of the Boolean masking, so the T-test the, on the Boolean masking and the IP masking. So in red uh, is the threshold of the T-score. So in practice, this means that when, when, this, when these lines in gray, in gray go, go out, out, this means that uh, our variable is leaking. And yeah, it's pretty evident that our IP masking show um, less evidence of leakage. So for concluding, uh, just remark again that uh, we, we, we saw some new IP multiplication scheme with um, good composability properties and better improved performance, evaluate improved performance. And uh, yeah, we can say that actually IP encoding represents an interesting alternative to Boolean masking uh, with just a slight performance over head over small n, compensated by less segments of leakage in practice. Thanks. If I understand correctly, the only condition you had on the masking matrix U was that the sum of all the n square elements will be zero. And yes. you achieved it by having uh, two identical values, one with plus and one with minus. But uh, actually, uh, you can achieve it without uh, this condition. If you just uh, choose a matrix uh, uh, where the sum of all the elements happens to be zero without pairs which are the plus and minus of each other. Yes. So is there any reason why you uh, put the extra condition that there should be pairs with plus and minus? Why not use a general matrix whose sum of n is zero? Do you gain anything from... Uh, the sum entries is zero? Yes. The sum of all the n square entries in U is zero. This was the only condition you ever used. Yeah, but if some of these entries are zero, then I uh, think you, you can have actually some... Um, you should not hide then all the, all the components inside. So because this U, I use them to hide during the computation, the computation itself. So I don't know, we will have A, I, B, J, plus U. So if this U is at this point is zero, you are not hiding any more than your products. No, not all the values are individually zero. But some, some of, of them. them. Ah, the sum of them. Ah. So you achieved it by having yeah, pairs yeah, yeah, which yeah. are equal to <coughs> yeah, I'm this saying, why, is it, uh, why do you put this restriction, not use a general uh, matrix? such that the sum of all the elements in the matrix happens to be zero. So I think this is, a, this is still possible. We just choose this, this because it's more um, practical. But yeah, good point, yeah, of course. Any other questions? Okay, let's ask Peter then.